afternoon folks this is Abram with BSA Bushcraft I wanted to come out and film a quick video first off because I have not been out in the woods for a long time or it's been quite a while or actually or at least our woods I've been um, to the Pathfinder school quite a bit doing stuff there but just being out here getting some you know alone time or just being out here and enjoying nature and filming some videos I haven't done that in quite a while so in preparation to a class that we're having down at the Pathfinder School this weekend, the Pathfinder Hanging. It's pretty much just an event where a whole bunch of hammockers or people, maybe you don't know about hammocking, um, go down there and we're going to share skills about how we like to hammock camp and just go out and camp for one night. So, um, in preparation for that, what I did was I packed a backpack how I like to pack it. This, again, is, or not again, but this is just my opinion on how I like to pack a backpack. It's the same concept as most people pack it. There are certain things you do have to watch out for. Um, first is the weight. Obviously, you don't want to carry a lot of weight, but if you do, you want to know where exactly to put it in your backpack. You don't want to put it in one certain spot, and I'll get into more depth in just a moment about that. And then you really need to consider the priorities, or do you need this item very quickly? If you need this item quickly, you don't want to bury it. If you need this specific item, let's say, um, snacks you don't want to put them on the bottom of your backpack and every single time you're hungry or say your water obviously most of the time water is on the outside or you got camel back with, with a straw coming out but you don't want to put your snacks on the bottom to where you have to dig stuff out so that's a prime example of why you want to be considerate or um, know exactly and think out where you're putting your gear in your pack so first I'll talk a little bit about the backpack I have here and a lot of people don't like modern equipment, and I understand that. I like carrying the traditional stuff, and, you know, it looks really cool, and it functions very well. And a lot of the stuff made by Duluth and Frost River and people like that, they're great packs. And they're pretty much bulletproof, but they can be expensive. And this pack it itself was expensive, too, so I can't say much about that. But this is made out of, you know, the new ripstop nylon and all that cool stuff there. Or the new features, modern stuff. And I'll tell you what, this pack has held up very well. I got it in 2014, my first um, Appalachian Trail trip I went on. I used this backpack. It made it through that trip. I was gone for two weeks then. The following year, um, actually was it the following year? Let me think. I think it was a couple years later or were, it was the year after. Either way, I went on another Appalachian Trail trip and it held up on that one. And then I took a Pathfinder Pioneer class and that class was like four day intensive hiking 12 miles a day in the thick brush and thorns and we got drug through that stuff and it held up then. And I also went on a trip with a couple other instructors a couple years ago up in the Adirondacks in New York, 62 miles in three days and it held up on that and I love this pack, super comfortable. The only thing that's kind of getting worn on it and I gotta find which side it's on, but understandably it's been, the first year I hiked was 200 miles, second year was 150, there's 350, 63 that's 310 or 313, give or take, I'd say about 350 miles on this backpack. So this backpack has done pretty dang well. And I don't know if I can even find it. But on one of these side water bottle pouches, my water bottle will fall out there. It ripped a little bit, and it's just because shoving a water bottle in and out, it put a lot of stress on this material. But it's definitely it's real stretchy. I don't know what it's made out of, but one of the sides, I can't even find it now. It's got a little tear from just going in and out all the time with the water bottles, you know, just shoving it in, forcing it in, or whatever. But that's the only wear and, tell, wear and tear this backpack has. So over, considering the trips it's been on, it's pretty dang good. And the reason I got this backpack, and this is an Osprey, I didn't mention the brand, it's an Osprey 40, Ace 48, so it's a 48 liter backpack, and that's pretty much the max that I want. You also have to consider that the bigger the backpack, the more stuff you can fit in it. The more stuff you can fit in that backpack, the more weight it's gonna be. And really, I'd say the smaller the backpack you can get, the better off you're going to be because you just simply can't get as much weight in it. And that's really going to pay off for you over time. The reason I got this is because it's got the adjustable um, back here, or this torso, the adjustable piece here. It's Velcro. And as I grown, or as I grew over the years, I can adjust this thing to fit me properly. So I'm not outgrowing a $300, $300 backpack 
going out and buying another $300 backpack. So basically I paid, I think it was like 200 for this when my grandparents got it for me, 200 bucks. And this thing has lasted me three years. I haven't had to go out and buy a new backpack simply because I can adjust this. So that's pretty much in depth with this backpack. And again, it's modern, but I like it. I can't complain about it. It's super comfortable and it's done me well. And it's really um, been tested. The buckles are great, still tight um, material. Nothing's going wrong with it as of right now. Hopefully it doesn't do that since I just said that. But this Osprey, and when I hiked on the Appalachian Trail, the number one backpack when I first went that I saw there was Osprey. Wasn't North Face, wasn't Gregory, it wasn't um, Duder. That's another backpack brand. Really expensive backpacks, Duder. It was not then, or it wasn't them, it was Osprey. Osprey, you're gonna pay up for them, but they're really good. it's a really good brand, or this one was. I don't know how they're made now. I'm pretty sure they're still really good quality. And I'm sure the brands have changed. They're probably carrying something else now, all the backpackers, but this is what I like to carry. So let me adjust the camera a little bit, and we're gonna dig in to show you what I have in here. This is for just a week in class. It's gonna be two nights, three days. Um, very simple class. I'll get there Friday camp, Saturday camp. And then Sunday, I'll spend a little bit of time there, then I'll leave. So let me adjust the camera, and I'll show you guys how to pack it and what camera I have in here so currently. You guys can see um, a tad bit better. Obviously, the first thing you saw, I kind of fell out when I was talking. The preview of this video or the entrance, introduction, was my 32-ounce stainless steel water bottle with the nesting cup. Um, very good combo. I can do a lot of things with this. I can cook. I can boil water. I can just obviously put my water in it just to drink over the day. I can make char cloth, I can make all sorts of medicines and whatever I need to do, I can do with this set. It'll, it weighs a little bit more than what a Nalgene bottle or a smart water bottle does, but there's so much more I can do with it. Opposed to that, you can't put that in the fire. Um, I'd rather just take the weight, and really it's not that much more for what it can do for you. It's got the nice handles on it and everything. So I'm gonna take this over a Nalgene bottle any day. So that's the first thing. And the total weight in this entire setup I have here is only 30 pounds. So that's food, clothes, toiletries, water filled up, um, sleeping bag, hammock, an oil skin tarp. The backpack itself, it's only 30 pounds. I weighed it, and that's not bad. It's, I mean, I'm only out for the weekend, but still, I've got everything in it. If I want to throw my camera gear in it, plenty of room on the side for my tripod. My camera weighs nothing, and I'm ready to go. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is on this Osprey backpack, I got a little side compartment here that I stuffed all my food in. Um, I just have some granola, organic granola. It's double chocolate chunk, um, dark chocolate. It's pretty dang good. Then I've got my utensils, which is just the GI stainless steel um, utensils here. A mountain house, some granola, and a couple other things. So in the front compartment, what I have is my food. And you gotta think, this is not completely on the bottom. That's what you want. You don't want your heavy stuff. Food, this food is all dehydrated, so it's not super heavy. That's why I have it in the front. If it was heavy, I'd have it more towards the top up here, but it's not heavy, so right there is perfectly fine. So the majority of my food, other than my bush pot um, food, there's a little bit in my bush pot, is in the inside here, but most of my food is on this front compartment. The reason is I can unzip it. I don't have to dig through anything. If I'm ready for a snack, just reach in here, grab what I want, and I'm ready to go. That's back to the accessibility of your food or your um, items. You don't want to put the stuff you access frequently on the bottom. You want it somewhere you can get to very quickly. The next thing I have, I just have my water bottle in one of these side compartments. I've got two hip compartments here. I can put a granola bar. As you guys saw earlier, I snacked on a granola bar. That's where I put my snacks. I can just unzip it as I'm hiking, grab my snack, and I'm ready to go. I've got a small little stainless steel flashlight here. I just, I don't even know where I got it, but it's a little bit of a light. If I need it, I've got it, and I'm ready to go. It's a little pouch I have on the side of one of these shoulder straps. On the top, I have a zipper, and I put a lot of my, uh, I guess, survival items or stuff that I would typically carry on my haversack, I put on top. They don't weigh too much. I've got my knife, some Gorilla Tape, and this is not a full roll, this is actually just a little bit left, but enough to get by if I've got to do a small little repair or something like that. 
I've got my rain gear, which is just a military nylon poncho camouflage. Baco Laplander saw. If I gotta saw something up real quick for you know a cooking tripod, notches, traps, I don't know, whatever you feel like doing. I've got a leather pouch with my headlamp and some spare batteries in it. I like leather, so that's why I made this quick pouch for it. My compass, soon to MC2 um, compass, very good compass, I like it. And it weighs nothing, so I put it on the top. And that's all that I have up here, very simple. Um, and all the stuff I can get to very quickly if I need it. And most of the stuff, like my headlamp, saw, I don't want to dig on the bottom just to get it. So kind of put this up on the top here. It all fits up here with plenty of room to spare, so if I had some tinder or something for a fire later that I saw that I wanted to collect, toss it in here. Be ready to go. Zip it up, plenty of room in there, and it's very nice. On the front here, I forgot to mention, I've got, it's like an elastic pouch on the front. This is usually where I put my tinder, funguses, if I found fungus on a bird trip on the trail I wanted to keep, this is where I put it. And this has had some rough stuff in it. And I wonder if this is where the rip was. I mean, not really. There's no rips on this at all. So this pack has really done well. It's got two straps here. On the inside, I've got a waterproof compartment. I have nothing in there right now, but that's where I would put my phone. So my phone won't get wet. I'd have like, you know, waterproof bag for it and then put it in there as a block bag or my camera. That's what I would put in that compartment. Next, you've got your main compartment here. And I'll just talk talk about what I have and then when we go to pack it, I'll explain how you want to pack it and the reasons behind it. So for my sleeping system, there's my crazy dog looking at something. <laughs> There's a little fawn over there, actually. Oh. Yeah, there's a little fawn he's barking at, so I'm sorry, I apologize about my dog over there. What are you barking at? Okay, so if he's barking, I'm sorry about that, but I've got for my sleeping attire, uh, my hammock. Oh. This is just a Grand Trunk Ultralight hammock. Um, 20 bucks on Amazon, and it's probably the comf most comfortable hammock that I've owned, and I've only owned a couple, but still 20 bucks and it's holding up. I've used it for a steady year now and it has not worn out at all. Hey, come here. Come here, Murphy. Well, you ain't gonna listen to me, but oh well. For my suspension system, these have got little S-hooks on there. They're a little cheap, but they've worked for me and for the cordage. I've got mule tape. This is really good stuff. Strong, lightweight, slick, and it's very small, so you can compact it pretty good. Then I've got my bag of toiletries, which is just toothpaste, you know, deodorant, things like that. My bag of clothes, again, I'm not gone very long, so this is not a too big bag of clothes, just to change the clothes in there. I've got my bush pot. This has got oatmeal, a little scr um, scouring pad, um, you know, miscellaneous parts of an MRE, I believe, in there. Then I've got my tarp. This is very heavy this is probably about five pounds it's a 10 by 10 ultra light oil skin tarp by deer creek wilderness outfitters it's not i guess for an oil skin tarp it's ultra light but it's five pounds so it's nice and hefty on and on the inside i've got let's see if i can find them somewhere on here how i folded it i've got some paracord for my ridge line and four stakes to get her staked out put that aside and then on the bottom i've got a little blanket to slide in on the inside of my sleeping bag, or not my sleeping bag, but underside of my hammock. It takes the place of a mat so you don't get um, convective currents going under you and making you cold. Just checking to see if that fawns over there. Fawns are doing really good around us this year, so that's really good. Nice season to hunt then. I've got the green intermediate bag out of the MSS system, very lightweight packed down small and for what the temperature is going to be this weekend this is plenty to keep me warm um, I'll probably have to keep it unzipped and guys that's it that's all I have in this backpack that's all that I need 
to, I guess, strive in the wilderness this weekend at the hammock hanging. Again, this isn't a very big, you know, um, strenuous class or whatever. It's just hang out and hang in your hammock all day, take naps, I guess. And we're going to teach pretty cool skills, you know, backpacking skills and a couple things like that. But overall, it's a pretty simple class. So now let's talk about how you want to pack this. Realistically, what you want is all of the heavy weight up against the back. You want it towards the top and up against the back here because that's where you're going to be able to carry the most weight the most comfortable or the most comfortably. So if you can have all that weight up near the top and up against your back, the better off you're going to be. You don't want the weight on the bottom of your backpack because the whole entire trip it's going to be pulling down on your shoulders and it's going to suck. So basically, I've got my sleeping bag. I'm not going to need this until I've, I'm ready to calm down for the night. So this is pretty much the last thing I'm going to need access to. This goes on the bottom of my backpack. And it's even got a little zipper down here if I need to access it quickly for the sleeping bag compartment. Then I've got my blanket. Very simple. Fold it up. Put it in there. Kind of push it down. And this 48 liter is plenty big for what I need. Then what you gotta think, the two lightest items there are already down on, down on the bottom, excuse me. Now you gotta think of the most heaviest item, or the heaviest item that you have. It's, it's not this bush pot, it's gonna be that five pound tarp, in my case. So what I did here was, I kinda folded it up to a point where I can literally line the back and kinda distribute the weight across the back of this backpack here. Kinda stand up a little bit. You see, this has got a ton of room left. But I put this, it's pretty much mid to the medium, not medium, but it's at the middle to the top there. It starts about right there, and it's spread across my back right where it needs to be. That's where I'm going to be able to carry the most weight, the most comfortably. And that's the most, uh, or that's the heaviest item that I have here. And after that point, then you're going to kind of just fill the dead space here with items that, you know, are medium weight or whatever. I've got my bush pot. This still weighs a little bit. It's not at the bottom. It's still in the middle, but it's towards the front. So I've got the heaviest item right up against my back, towards the top. Then the rest of them, I'm just going to kind of slide down in here. I've even got a bush pot in here with 30 pounds, so you really don't need that much stuff to thrive out in the woods for a weekend, like your typical car camping. Then I would probably say, let me kind of, these are about the same, I'm going to put my clothes because it's a little bulkier next to that bush pot. And one thing I did not mention here, these compression straps on the side, you want to unbuckle them so that you, they're not going to let you push things down the side and get it nice and tight. You'll tight and compress them up after you're done packing this. Slide this down the side here and I've got all my stuff mostly in dry bags just in case this bag gets wet it's water resistant it's got a little rain cover to it but just in case now I've got that in and I'm pretty much just gonna pack the rest of my stuff where it fits so there went my toiletries hammock and then my ropes for my hammock there and I've still got plenty of room in here to throw a sweatshirt, you know, a small pillow, um, whatever you want. We actually had a discussion down at the school this weekend about, you know, pillows, should you carry one or should you not? Because <laughs> we had a um, bushcraft class for kids or a little wood lure class for um, the youth. And really, whatever, the, one of the most important things in the woods is to get a really good night's rest. So if it takes a pillow to get a good night's rest, you know, and obviously in certain terms here, don't just go take a camper into the woods if you're into bushcraft you can but like as simple as a small little travel pillow if that helps you sleep better take it because if you sleep better you're gonna have more energy to get more things done during the day and you're gonna be whoever's camping with you, you're gonna be in a happier mood and it's gonna make them happier and you know everything's gonna go great or at least it should so once you get that you could sh shove a pillow in here a sweatshirt I use a sweatshirt for a pillow typically and you're good to go and then you can cinch this down plenty of room in there. Flip the hood to the top here. Actually, I feel like I'm missing something, but I just got my water bottle, so I guess I just didn't have that much stuff in here, which is fine with me. 
less stuff, the better. The more places I'll be able to go without worrying about having 20 pounds of gear or 60 pounds of gear to lug with me. So you're going to secure this down here. Actually, before I do them straps, you want to do your compression straps. A little rusty with this, guys. I apologize. Do your compression straps here. Flip them to the side. Then you can kind of adjust things here. There's quite a few buckles, which can be a little confusing. But it's not too bad. Once you get the hang of it. I'll buckle those and pull this up to where it needs to be. Got some more straps back here. And again, I really like this backpack. It's modern, but I don't care. I like it. It does what I need it to do. It's held up. The color may not be the greatest, but I'll still take it. So flip this up. This hood up. Make sure everything is secure and you're ready to rock and roll. Put your water bottle on the side and you've got your complete packed backpack, how it should be packed, especially if you're hiking between 10 and 15 miles a day. Pretty much wraps up what I wanted to talk about in this video. Pretty much um, a lot of people overcomplicate this stuff and it, it's really not that complicated. You just the two things you need to be aware of is when you want these items, where you need to put them in your backpack because if you need this item right away or the frequency you need these items, know where to put them. And the second thing is where to distribute all the weight in your backpack. Because if you put it in the wrong places, you're going to have a miserable trip and it's not going to be the best time for you. It only takes one trip to screw it up for someone's you know, entire life. If they've got one trip, you know, 100% cotton socks or something like that, or the wrong backpack doesn't fit right, and it gives them bad blisters or whatever, it takes that one time, and they won't want to ever do it again. The only thing I'm missing in this is probably, um, I usually have a Bic lighter with me in my pocket. I have a magnifying glass on my compass. There's two ways of a possible ignition source and then a ferro rod, I always have one with me. I'd slide one on the top here. And the fire, you know, the fire situation's taken care of. I could put some fat wood, surefire, something like that. I'll probably put some surefire discs in there and I'd be ready to go. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, comment what you guys thought, share it with your friends, like my Facebook page. Um, if you got any business questions, I've had people uh, message me on YouTube about business questions, what email. Um, my email is bsabushcraft at gmail.com. I'll put it in the description of the video so you guys, if you got any questions, business um, questions, just email that. We'd be good to go there. Um, I appreciate your guys' continued support for this channel. I'm going to try to um, reboot it and get it back going. Um, when we hit 5,000 subscribers, i got a couple other generous people that's donated for the um, number one prize, which will still be one prize package, but there's more added to it. So when we hit 5,000 subscribers, I will do the drawing, and there will be a winner. Again, thanks for watching this video, guys. This has been Abram with BSA Bushcraft. Um, I'll catch you guys on the next video, and have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.